Tell me when. We started. Oh, okay. Thank you. Welcome everybody. This beautiful Sabbath morning. I uh, want to thank you uh, for all coming on again and uh, we pray that we'll have a blessed Sabbath day together. So just open with a short prayer. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this Sabbath, a special day when we can come together at family camp. Thank you for the week so far and we just ask for the Holy Spirit to be with us all now. Be especially with the Eccles family as they share this morning. And we thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. And we'll sing the, the theme song together. And then we'll have a children's story. And then the Eccles, Eccles family. And um, they're going to speak together as a family and give us a message this morning. A prodigal family came home. Okay. Better sing, mute all your mics, please. And we'll sing the, the theme song. You. Sing the theme song, join with us. Dear families, we are God's beloved ones. We're precious in his eyes. God has made yes. us for his pleasure. We're gifts he won't despise. He sent his son into the world to save us from our sins. Jesus came to show us holiness and purity within. God the Father, Son, and Spirit all want us to be like them. If we make God our beloved, He will write His law within. God will bind our hearts together. He will help us work as one. When we look our beloved, we in heart become his sons. Next verse. Job was a man who soul enjoyed a long and testing time. Yet when he was sick and suffering, God's word Proof more than life, although Joe's friend tried to prove him wrong, his faith would stay. When God said, Friends, don't despise my son, Joe out for them and prayed. Chorus God the Father, Son, and Spirit. Who want us to be like them? If we make God our beloved, He will write His law within. God will bind our hearts together. He will help us work as one. When we look on our Beloved, we in heart become his sons. Last verse. King David was a mighty man whose songs exposed his heart. If he lost sight of the Lord and sin, from him he went to part. One lazy day, David broke God's law and killed one to hide his seed. After Nathan showed him where he fell, for oh, mercy he did plead. God the Father, Son, and Spirit all want us to be like them. If we make God our beloved, He will write His law within. God will bind our hearts together. He will help 
must work as one. When we look on our beloved, we in heart, last chorus, become his sons. And one day, when earth is passing, we will learn and God and say, Oh my Lord, my dear beloved, how I'm glad to live and stay in your presence all the day long. I will fly to worlds of fire, singing my own story, my song. Now you'll know is in Amen. Amen. Thank you, Abby. Abby wrote that song, the words and the music. Thank you so much. We're getting to really enjoy singing it now. So, Abby, mm -hmm. I'd like to start with the children's story. So, children, all come forward. This is your time. Yes. This is the story for the young ones, and it's the story for adults as well. I'm sure we'll all learn from it. From a book called Storytime Treasury, it's called Joe Benton's Coals of Fire. We'll see what that means. All right, this story involves two boys, an older cousin to one of the boys who's a grown man, and a boat. The first boy who owned this boat um, went to go and find it. His name was Joe. He went to look for his boat. He was so excited to put it on the water one day. But as he came near the place he hid it, got surprised oh no the boat had been torn up you can see this beautiful image of the boat the older cousin gave joe joe's cousin gave the boat to joe it was all torn up and he thought oh i wonder who did it and then he thought i know who it was it was fritz a boy that he knew he must have been angry because i didn't ask him to come to the launching joe had a mean thought and said i'm gonna pay him back for this so he thought what should I do to Fritz because he was mean to me? His idea, well, if Fritz comes by this way, by this footpath, like I know he does every morning, I'm gonna make him trip over. Is that a good idea, boys and girls? I don't think so. He was waiting for Fritz, and then he heard someone come and he thought, oh, was it Fritz? Do I get to trip him now? No, it was his cousin, cousin Herbert, who gave Joe the boat. He said, oh, Joe, what are you doing here? Joe said, oh, well, my boat is broken. And he explained the story to his uncle. He said, because Fritz was mean to me, I decided I'm going to trip him up this morning, make him feel bad for what he did. And the cousin said, well, I think Fritz does need some punishment, but your idea is an old trick. I've got a better idea. What's that, said Joe. Cousin Herbert said, well, if thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. If he be thirsty, give him water to drink, for thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. That's taken from Proverbs 25, verses 21 to 22. And Joe thought, I meant to do something nice to Fritz. That's not going to work, cousin. Is this a good idea? Try it once, the cousin said. If you treat Fritz kindly, He'll feel so ashamed, he would rather that you tripped him over instead. Joe thought, all right, I don't think it will work. You sure, cousin? He's like, yep. These coals burn up a great amount of rubbish. Malice, envy, ill feeling, revenge, so much more. And Joe thought, well, after you've given them something, you can Let's think of a good coal to put on Fritz's head. Now, this isn't a real coal. This is the coals of kindness. Okay. And so, Cousin Herbert had an idea. Well, Fritz is a poor boy. He doesn't have many books. Why don't you lend him some of your own? And Cousin said, I'll let you think about it. Goodbye. Bye, Cousin Herbert. All of a sudden, Fritz was coming down the road and he thought, all right, I'm glad I didn't trip him over. So Fritz wanted to look away and didn't want to say anything, but Joe decided to re um, ask him a question. Fritz, do you read that much? Sometimes, Fritz said, well, when I've driven the cows home and done all my work, I read anything I can get a hold of. 
So Joe said, would you like my new book on travels? Fritz was amazed. He thought, really? Would you let me have it? And Joe said, yes. I think I have some other books you'd like to read. Then Joe said what he had been thinking about all morning. Oh, Fritz, could you help me fix my bow? Someone tore up the sails and made a hole in the bottom. Do you know who did it? Fritz was so ashamed. He said, yes, Joe, it was me. I feel so bad and I felt so mean when you promised me the books. Joe said, well, I kind of thought you did it. And Joe said, but you did that. He couldn't even finish what he was saying. He felt so bad, he dashed off without another word. And Joe thought, wow, that cold has burned. That kindness works. Fritz would have rather I tripped him up. When the captain, Joe, the crew, little boys, came to launch that beautiful boat, they found Fritz repairing the damage. And when Fritz saw Joe, he presented him a little present. Next picture, please. He presented him a beautiful flag to put on his boat. Now Joe's playmates, they studied this secret. They saw how Joe treated Fritz with kindness. And so if any trouble came, someone would say, let's try a few of Joe Benton's coals. And it was astonishing to see how quickly their hearts grew warm toward each other. That's something we should all do, show kindness to those who hurt us and to those who make us feel mean. Because when we do so, we make God's voice speak to their mind and burn a thought, come on, do something right. Overcome evil with good. We pray you all enjoyed the lesson today. Thank you for listening, young ones and adults. Thank you, Abby, lovely story. Okay, now we have the whole family, Al, Anna, Abby and Alicia that are going to share together. Wonderful. Thank you, Abby, for the children's story. I'm just wondering, Hannah, if we can place the PowerPoint on display. Can you all see the PowerPoint? Wonderful. Thank you. The prodigal son who came home. Happy Sabbath to all of you. I trust that you've had a blessed week. We are living in incredible times. Who would have believed that the world would be in lockdown? Who would have believed that how we worship and where we worship would be affected? I believe that these are special moments of preparing us for the last scenes of Earth's history. And I pray and hope that this message will touch your hearts and encourage you to be prepared for our soon coming Savior. Why don't we just have a brief word of prayer? Our loving Father, we just want to thank you for the love of Jesus Christ. Thank you for calling us home. Thank you for the life of Jesus on the cross. And I pray that by beholding him day by day, we will be changed into the same image. For these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Al. We can't see the PowerPoint. I don't know whether other people can. Okay. Anna? No, we can't either. Okay, one second. Can you see the screen? Is she allowing you to share your screen? Hopefully you can see the screen. Oh, it's coming. Yeah, it's come through now. Okay. Perfect. Wonderful. The prodigal son who came home. We're familiar with the Bible record in Luke 15, verse 12 and 13. We're told, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. My question is, 
Did the father do any wrong? We're not told of anything that he did wrong. When you think about the perfect universe that God had, did God do anything wrong? Why was it that Lucifer fell into sin? What did God do or what did he not do? Was it his fault? Or are these decisions that God has given us as individuals? Can it be that we can have all of the good benefits that God would want us to have, but we're still free moral agents to make our own choices? I want to share something with you. This son really didn't appreciate all that the father had given him. And he was very, very focused on setting on his own path. And I just want to come back to that story. But in between, I'm going to share my story. Anna will share her story. And my daughters will also share their stories of how the father has called us back home. You know, I remember my grandfather. And the story was, my grandfather was a Sunday keeping uh, Christian. But he had a dream, and in that dream, he remembered the words, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And he could not stop until he found a church that was following that Bible record. And he did. He found the Seventh-day Adventist church in Jamaica, in one of the Jamaican churches. He had eight children, and on the screen, you can see a picture of one of his children. Um, this is Edna, my late mother. And when she was a teenager, she came to Britain as a trained nurse. She became a midwife delivering babies. And she had her own two deliveries, my oldest daughter, oh, sorry, my oldest sister, rather, and myself. And if you can see on the screen, this image was when I was five years old. Back in the day, very innocent. Back in a day when your parents would make your own clothes, um, it was a wonderful time. My early childhood was a wonderful time. And I was very thankful for the freedoms, the health, the energy, and for a godly mother during my upbringing. Some of the things that we remember back in the day, you won't see today. We had what was called the NHS glasses with the air hooks. Um, we didn't really have much choice in terms of color. I often was given the color pink as my glasses at the age of five. Back in the day, we didn't have central heating. We had paraffin heaters. In fact, my mother would give me some money to travel to the local petrol station. You'd put a token into the machine and it would give you um, paraffin into a little tub. You'd bring that back home and that would heat the house. It kept you warm, but let me tell you, those, um, let's just say, smells were very noxious. Your throat would be dry, your, your, your eyes would be um, um, painful before going to bed, but that's how it was. That was a form of heating that we had. During the 1970s, it was a time where we spent most of our time playing outdoor. Um, as you can see, the skateboard and roller skates, these were things that we would do on a regular basis. We often played marbles, and you know, sometimes we'd look at the marbles as if they were jewels to behold, and some were more beautiful than others. We often played conquers to see which conquer could break another conquer, and some of us took it to a very serious level by placing their conquer in a fridge to make it more hardened. But these were some of the very innocent games back during that time. As a child, I remember so often staring at the floor or within the grass and watching two camps warring against each other, often black ants versus red ants. It was commonplace. But you know, the thing that I enjoyed the most was just the outdoor fresh air, the freedom of being able to just run from breakfast to dinner. In fact, in family camp, many of the games that we play were some of the games that we used to play in our local neighborhood. It was just a wonderful time to be a child back 
in the 1970s. For some of us who are a bit more courageous, we would try to build a treehouse. Now, this picture of the treehouse is a far more better specimen than the treehouse that we built. In fact, once we built our treehouse, we were often wondering if the floor would remain. But it did. We were safe. I'm sure our guardian angels were alongside us. But these are the things that we used to do. I just want to tell you, we were very happy children, but we didn't have any digital devices. They just simply didn't exist, but we were happy. And it came to a time where I wanted to give my heart to the Lord. I was about 12 or 13 years old. And we had a minister who was giving uh, Bible studies to me. And we had looked at different areas of the Bible, and I was just so amazed by God's character, but, but especially amazed by his prophecies. And I could not believe that we were living at the feet of the image. I couldn't believe it. I'm sure you'll all agree, beloved, we're beyond just the feet of the Daniel 2 image. We're living in the calcium, in the toenails, of the feet of the image. The time is at hand, beloved, and we can see those signs all around us. But you know, something happened. For whatever reason, the Bible studies stopped in preparation for baptism. I tried to understand from my mother what had happened, and I didn't understand. And that built within my heart a lot of anger and resentment. I didn't really feel as if I was a true child of God. I, I actually felt maybe I'm not good enough to be baptized. And you know, whenever we're in that experience, we know that the enemy is very close to our side. And sadly, beloved, especially parents and young children, remember what the Bible says. A little bit of leaven leavens the whole lump. You see, the song that or the music I was listening to was a hip hop song. It was a, a genre that was starting to enter into the UK in the early 1980s. And I started to listen to more of this music. And there was an influence that was not of God that was transforming me. The way how I looked was different. So my hair started to grow and back in the days we had long curly perm hair. I know it might be hard to believe as you look at me now, but my hair used to be in the middle of my back. It was a time where we used to dance and we used to have competitions as dancers one against each other. And if I'm being honest with you, the content I was absorbing was not of God. The communication coming out of my mouth was not of God. And I was with people that were not of God. This hurt my mother's heart. But you see, my loving mother never gave up on me because she was praying for me every single day. You know, some of the things that we don't want to see happen in our lives can often happen. And whilst I was still a teenager in the world, because I was in the world for 10 years, I learned that my mother had breast cancer. And she did have surgery to remove a portion of her breast. For children, it's always a worrying time. And I couldn't understand why my mother, God, she's such a godly mother. All she's done in my life is good. And my anger grew and grew and grew. There was only one way I could deal with this anger. And I believe God had to assist me with this. And that was to put it into weight training. I would spend two to three hours in the gym, up to five days a week, pushing two, 250 pounds on my shoulders, 350, 400 pounds, squatting 24 times with the same weight or bench pressing the same weight 24 times. I had to place that anger in a direction. Beloved, I truly believe to this day, I was at such a thin edge. It would have taken just one other man to just push me 
to a small degree. And perhaps that could have been an occasion where my life could have gone in a completely separate path. I do believe that even though I was walking away from God, he placed his divine angels around me to not be tempted to do that which I'd regret for the rest of my life. And I just want to thank God for Christ Jesus. You see, this was a kind of diet that I had, beloved. It was a high fat, high salt, high sugar, meat, caffeine, addiction diet. There you can see it. In the morning, waking up with a bowl of cereal with plenty of fruit. I'd have a, a liter of milk with two tablespoons of sugar mixed in. I'd have my protein powder mixed in, my orange juice. I'd have my eggs, sometimes boiled. Sometimes I'd have an omelet with Worcester sauce on top. And I'm on my way to work and I'd get some food from McDonald's. And whilst I'm at work, I'd have six to eight cups of coffee with fizzy drinks, with chocolate bars. At lunchtime, two or three sets of sandwiches, tuna sandwiches to keep me healthy. Clearly I was not. And in the afternoon, I had protein bars and bananas in my bag so that just before I would train, I'd have maybe a, a sweet and sour sauce on the bottom right corner. And then on my way back from training to home, I'd often get a fast food uh, element, whether it's KFC or kebabs or again, you know, McDonald's. That was my diet. Could I hear God's voice? I was eating every two hours. What kind of condition was my blood in my body? What kind of blood was I feeding to my brain? Well, various things happened to me, even though on a physical side I looked healthy, but internally my body was destroying itself. And if anybody has seen Super Size Me, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. My mind was benumbed. I'd often feel a sharp pain in the side. I was constantly in the lavatory. But most concerning, I'm still a teenager and I'm coming into my early 20s, I would have heart palpitations. What was going on? I was training in the gym, but my health was going south. Somebody had the courage to invite me to a message. There was a campaign. I didn't want to go. And if you can imagine me coming into this Christian campaign, I did not look like a Christian when I walked into that room amongst other well-dressed individuals. But I sat down and I listened. And God delivered the message I needed to hear. It wasn't a message on Daniel 2 or the prophecies. The message was simply this, the cross the price that the Son of God paid for my sins. I'd never heard the message preached like that ever. The person that took me to the campaign drove me home. I couldn't speak one word, not one, because I was welling up. And as soon as I came back in my home door, I just broke down like a baby. I couldn't hold back the tears. I said, Lord, I've been walking in the opposite direction, and all this time you still love me. What does the Bible say? God died for us yet whilst we were still sinners. My heart was touched. My heart was warmed. And the transformation took place. We remember in the Bible, repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. I started to have Bible studies, and eventually, by the grace of God, I was once again brought back into the church. I came back home, beloved, and as a result of that, a team of us were dedicated behind gospel medical missionary work. This is from one of our websites that we, we manage called Leaves of Life. And you can see Don Miller, and we had also Calvin Thrash Jr. from the Uchi Pines Health Institute. We had um, a two-week um, gospel medical missionary training course in central London, and it was a great success. We had obviously brethren that attended. We even had a pastor that attended from one of the um, London churches, but we also had other people outside of the Adventist faith that also 
um, joined us for those two weeks. It was a blessing. Another website that since we've been uh, managing is called Ministry of Healing because I am so convicted. We are so close to the end of time. People need to hear the message, fear God and give glory to him. They need to hear the three angels messages. And on this website, I try and focus on a um, relevant news story or on a current theme or a current topic. And after writing about it, I will then naturally link them back to the first, second and third angels messages. And ever since then, my family have been focused and dedicated in sharing this truth because it was the book the great controversy that really, together with the Bible, really helped me to understand clearly God's message for these last days. You know, in Christ's object lessons, when we think about the love of God, it says the love of God still yearns over the one who has chosen to separate from him. And look at this. He sets in operation influences to bring him back to the Father's house. Isn't that wonderful to hear? We may be separate from God, but he's already planning to bring us back home. In Psalms 103, verse 13, it's a psalm that's very special to my heart. The Bible says, like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. In Hosea 14, verse 4, the promise is, I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely, beloved, and especially children. Remember that. When you are walking in the Lord, God loves you. If you were to choose to go away from the Lord, guess what? God still loves you. He hates our sin, but he loves you. He loves me. His love never changes, just like his character and just like his law. It's everlasting. He goes on, under inspiration here, for mine anger is turned away from him, Hosea 14, 4. And again, in Jeremiah 3, 22, the Bible says, return, ye backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. I discovered in my life there is no other way to be happy but to trust and obey in Jesus Christ. I'm so thankful, beloved. You know, the family camp meetings we've been attending since 2012, and as we have been growing as Christians and with increasing responsibilities, the first time I came to family camp, sorry, Jack and Joe, I'm just going to be honest. I wasn't really expecting much. That's the honest truth. I thought, I'll come this, this year. You probably won't see me again because I had been disappointed in previous gatherings, not at the Wells Family Camp, but at other camp meetings. But you know what happened? My children were happy. There were messages that stirred my heart and stirred my wife's heart. I was able to speak with like-minded brethren. And it was so lovely to be able to go from the family camp location and just walk into the countryside with your family, with your daughters, with your children, or with friends, talk and pray with each other. For me, family camp is like a spiritual detox that as a family, even we need on a regular basis. And you know, I'm just grateful to have had 27 years of marriage with my wife. The Lord brought Anna into my life at a time when I was at my lowest web. And by the grace of God, he's given us two healthy children who have been brought up into the faith, homeschool in Christ. So I just want to encourage you, beloved. Where sin abounds, grace abounds even further. If we give up on God, God never gives up on us. Remember, God is love. Anna came home. Good morning, everybody. Happy Sabbath. 
Uh, who am I? My name is Anna Eccles. I'm a mother, a wife, an educator, um, agriculture and a health enthusiast. Yeah, we educated both uh, of our daughters from pre-birth, yeah, before birth, you educated your children until now. Uh, my background, I was born and bred in Portugal. Uh, from when I was a child, we grew most of our food seasonally. Uh, we grew from potatoes to onions and cabbages, beans, carrots, beets, grapes, cherries, peaches, apples, sharon fruit or persimmon. Um, and uh, although I came willingly to, to, to Britain, it was a drastic change in my life. Um, after being here for a number of years, um, I smelt that the matter plant is about his garden. And believe you or not, I, I did cry. Uh, I really miss the smells of country. Um, although I was looking for a different experience in the UK, I really missed my life of planting and growing. And around the time we got married, we knew uh, about the health message and uh, the need to move to the country, to a more rural location, to, to, um, for a walk, uh, uh, closer walk with God. In 1997, God opened um, the way, um, and Al and I moved from central London uh, to the semi-rural area of the children's in, in Buckinghamshire, with a desire to move farther into the country. As the years passed by and the girls were born and growing, I was very disappointed about not moving uh, more deeper into the countryside and the land I was hoping for. I understand now that really I was disappointed with God as the process of moving took so long, ever so long, and uh, stopped asking uh, God, him, about moving into the country. I just stopped talking. I kind of just... I know God wants the best for us and uh, our best interests at heart. Yes, I'm still hoping and working towards having a more rural home and the land even of my own. Land is, is the best commodity one can have. Whether we'll move or not, I don't know, but I do whatever I can do, even now. God said to Moses, what is that in thine hand? Moses answered, a rod. You can find that in Exodus 4.2. No, we don't have a rod, you know, we, but we have a garden and have an allotment and we're making the most of it. I understand now that what, wherever I am, I have to do country living. And as I believe, it's a training ground for the future. God promises in Genesis 8.22 that as long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. So this is a promise for us. That means until the very end of time, things will grow. God's people will have food, even if some hunger, but there'll be food. So here are some pictures of things that I have, well, we have the allotment <clears throat> and in the garden at the moment. And some things are from the past because the season has not come yet. So this is some of the runner beans that are growing and trying to uh, uh, grow into the, the, the canes. Uh, this is a bed that we pulled together. We thought we'd show you in just even a square you can grow different things. We've got on, on the top left beetroots, uh, spring onions, carrots, then more spring onions because protect the carrots from against the carrot fly. The got lettuce is very, and I don't know if you recognize what's on the left, but it actually we try for the first time grow um, watercress. It needs to be well watered, but is a good way of growing your own watercress and is beautiful. This one was all grown from seed, by the way, so it's a great experience to grow something new, um, as well as all the things that we need every day. This is some of the stuff we grew in the past, uh, some pumpkins and carrots and um, our own apples and raspberries. Uh, this is some experience that we wanted. We wanted the girls to have an experience to know how to nail, uh, use the hammer and the nails and, um, and the saw. So we got some, for very little, we got a whole bunch of uh, pallets and we decided that we would change them into these. It just makes some raised beds. <clears throat> some of them need replacing now because the, there was a, a little bit, a while. But it's a great way of getting your children involved of doing uh, some um, 
work with um, nails and, and, and the hammers and saws and things. They're measuring as well. So it's a great way. Teach them about angles along the way as well. So I'll let Abby, um, just a minute. Um, so I just want to encourage everybody to, um, to grow their own food and uh, not be discouraged just because you're not in the country or that place that you dream of. Uh, but to um, grow your own food for mental, physical, and spiritual strength, health, self-sufficiency. And um, in each one of these things, we see God's love to us. And uh, yes, we do love, uh, I do love uh, the family camp. I love the setting. I love the challenging messages, although some upset me. Uh, but I learned as well, the great opportunity is a great opportunity to meet people that are like-minded and to enjoy the brethren and the fresh air. Thank you all. Have a good day. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to share my testimony now. I'm going to share my testimony now. My testimony began in 2002 when I was born. I was and still am raised in a Christian home. Um, I was and I still am raised in a Christian home. The benefits I found from being homeschooled is definitely time to think, time to reflect, time to learn, time to grow. I think one thing I've appreciated a lot is the emotional support mom and dad can give to me. And maybe if I was in school, I'd have the same support, but I know while I'm homeschooled, if I need time, I can have that time. And that's a really wonderful blessing. Um, with family worship or church services or prayer meetings, I had many opportunities to learn about God. And learn about God, I did. I was the young person who would listen in and try to do what I had heard. I did desire to be perfect as a child and still desire that now. <laughs> um, but... I noticed and God brought to my mind actually that as a child I wanted to do the right thing with my own effort. I didn't want to trust God and I didn't realize I needed to serve God out of love and not out of fear. This impression came to me around about I was seven, eight years old. Now eventually as we studied a lot of the Bible including the fundamental beliefs of our church I remember desiring to be baptized but there was one thing that hold, held me back again, and that was fear. But by God's grace, at one week-long revival, I decided to surrender all to God once again, and I decided to be baptized, and this was the right time because I didn't feel any fear. And God worked a miracle, really. After that week-long revival, there was a two-week campaign um, run by the same sort of churches, and I was baptized at the end of that two-week campaign. So God really worked a miracle. Now, even though I was at home in a Christian family, I've only lived with my family, I have had a prodigal experience, as I'm sure we all have had sometimes. But there are a few important lessons that I have learned, and I just pray that we will take these lessons on board too. These are biblical principles that God's taught me to put in my life, and I benefited from them. First lesson is to put God first. Matthew 6, 33 talks about that. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. The way this verse especially applies to my testimony is that I had to learn to put my central hope, my central happiness in God and not in people. Yes, love people, love your family, love your friends, but they're not your everything. Flesh and humans are not your arm. God is your arm and should be your center anchor in life. The second lesson I learned is to never give up. I'll read a verse about that, Proverbs 24, 16, which says, For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Uh, oh, very, early on, very early on in my Christian experience, I remember learning to continue going. And even at times where I was really discouraged and I had given up in my heart, um, God did find a way to just stop me and say, you know what's best. You know um, all the benefits and the peace and joy and fulfillment and purpose you get 
from following me. The last le lesson I learned, one of the more recent lessons I learned, is to serve others. And to confirm that, I'll read Matthew chapter 20, verses 27 and 28. Jesus said these words to the, the disciples when they were all kind of jealous of each other and wanted the greatest positions in God's kingdom. Um, I'll read from verse 25, actually. Jesus called unto them and called unto him and said, you do know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, the people, and they that are great exercise authority upon them, but it shall not be so among you. For whosoever shall be great among you, let him be your minister, and whosoever be chief among you, let him be your servant. Why? Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Over time, God did impress on my heart that I do need to be a witness to others, whether it is in person, whether it is online in how I communicate with people, and even if I'm called to do something at events like this one, I must serve others and share with others the blessings God has given me. A wonderful thought I think of Sabbath. Sabbath is a day to receive blessings but a day to give blessings. So think of a blessing you can share with others. Then my last question would be why family camp? Um, I mentioned the things my family mentioned. I love the people there, the friends I've made, even newer people that I've met and learned. And of course, if you're being kind with others, you'll get to appreciate who people are. Um, I love the location. Um, by God's grace, we should all be there next year and you'll see how beautiful the place is, how quiet and peaceful it is. Um, you should see the lambs around, the flowers out, it's just really bright, beautiful spot in Wales. And I also enjoy the opportunities like in this event to sing and I thank God for that. Um, the last encouragement I'll share is a passage from Hebrews. Please turn there if you can. Hebrews 4 verses 14 to 16. It says, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Pray that was a blessing. Thank you. Alicia Caper. Hello, my name is Alicia and happy Sabbath. I'm 14 and I have my family, my sister, and my parents, and I've got two adorable hamsters and in the past two bunnies. And this is my testimony. So my childhood has been a very pleasant one. We live in a semi-rural spot. My parents have put me around good friends and families who could influence me for the better because for every parent out there it's a really good idea to put your kids around people who can relate to them, good influences, older people, younger people, it's great. And I've been homeschooled since I was born. My pa parents have sacrificed very much for me and Abby and I've also played the piano since I was young and it's been such a blessing to have our garden that the Lord's blessed us with. Because even now, whilst I'm here, I can sometimes see a bird, which is really nice, especially whilst being school. And also, my parents were always good to me, and they always made my life the best they could. I did want my own way, though, and I thought I had known better. And I had had lots of struggles with bad habits and how I used my device. Now, social media can be really useful. It's the truth. But we need to use it to God's honor and glory. And I didn't do that. And I had spent lots of time on it. And I also wasn't responsible. And I got easily addicted to my advice. I'm sure some of you out there know what that's like, and it's not good. And I also loved the wrong music. Lots of music out there had sounded so attractive to me, and I loved it. But the truth is that music is not good for you. And music is spiritual. It's much more beyond than just it sounds good. No, it's not just it sounds good, it is, it is just bad. But some music is really good, like hymns. Those are spiritual songs to uplift your spirit. And I also watched a lot of things and again, spent a lot of time on social media. But throughout all this, my dear family had prayed for me. And let us not forget as kids and teens, 
our parents love us. They pray for us. Even as parents out, you parents out there, your parents, I'm sure they prayed for you too, and at least wish best. For you. And for a while, what I did wrong, and sometimes behind my parents' back, didn't bother me as much. But as the Holy Spirit convicted me of my wrong, I felt very guilty. So I went to God and to my parents to confide in. By talking to them, it helped me very much. My big burden was handed over to God and to my parents. When we as young people go through struggles, let us go to our parents because our parents are there to help us and guide us. They're not there to tell us off and that sort of stuff. They're there to tell us the truth and instruct us. And it's good to be chastened in knowing what's right and wrong. So when we're older, we can make the right choices. And the truth is throughout all this, I wasn't truly happy. Happiness, which comes from the world, goes up and like caffeine, goes right back down again. So then from that point, I had looked and thought about God the more. I wanted to be like God and have his character. Since then, I've had hiccups, but I know that I have an advocate with Jesus Christ. Don't forget that. It says in God's word that we have an advocate with Jesus Christ, the righteous. Now, recent, well, about a year ago or so, I had decided to be baptized because I love the Lord and I want to become like him. And it's good as young people that we think about this, but as Hannah's message yesterday had mentioned, we need to know who God is first before we can actually trust him and surrender to him. And in final, let us love and protect our siblings and families. Spending time together is wonderful. Spend time with friends. Even through all this COVID, which has taken so many precious lives, either we can think of it that way, or we can think of it as God is saving his children too. There are many people who I'm sure in their last moments are like, Lord, I want you. And then they're not being tempted anymore. And then when God comes, we'll be in heaven together. That's another way to look at it too. And then as parents, please do respect your children and love them in a good way, of course, because I believe that respect goes to parents and back to children again, because the Lord knows how we should treat our children. The Lord knows how parent, children should respect their parents, because it says in God, to be obedient in the Lord, for this is right. Mm -hmm. And then, and be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Let us remember that. That is very important. And why family camp? Well, it's a beautiful place and there are many lovely families which go each year. And we've met some of our actual closest friends there. And it's really special. The first year we went, I actually can't remember, but there are many things to look forward to. You've got team breakout session, parents breakout session, choir practice with Hannah, which is really nice, and once with Sean. And it's a great place. I've learned many mistakes there that I've made. And I've also learned how to be better socially. And for parents who are looking for other children who are homeschooled, it's definitely a place to go. Your expectations, I'm sure, will be meet, met, because they met mine for sure. And, uh, and thank you, Uncle Jack and Auntie Joe for family camp. It's been a real blessing. And this is a story, a quick story, which is a beach experience we had recently. So this photo was taken before my dad and all four of us got soaking wet with another family which are on this call. And basically we went for a nice walk after a wonderful day with them. And there was this beautiful sand pinnacle out into the sea, which we were on, and it had of course the water around it. And we went in the late afternoon, we crossed a little stream at the beginning of this sand pinnacle, and we didn't think much of it. And then we continued walking along the sand pinnacle, the sun was setting, it's beautiful. We took photos together. Me and another person were thinking of going to the other end of the island. But then my dad was like, maybe we should go back. So we're like, oh, oh okay, yeah, let's go back. And as we were going back to our horror, that little stream of water between the pinnacle and the sandbag turned into a big river. And I can't swim. <laughs> so I was excited. And because I just wanted to get my feet wet. And dad had prayed before we crossed the water and one of our friends went through first and the water wasn't, it went up to about here maybe, something like that. And by God's grace, we got to the other side safely. And when I think of that story, I think of the fact that God answers prayer. When you're in trouble and you think you don't know what to do, just call on God. 
he hears you, he can see you. And another story you can learn about it is no matter how many mistakes you make or anything like that, no, you can come back to God. There is still opportunity. Even though the tide is coming in, God is still there to help you because we weren't there alone. We had friends who could swim. We also had um, other people along the bank. God has at his angels around us. We must never forget that. And life is special. Let's live every day to God's honor and glory. Let's be an inspiration to our siblings and treat them with love and respect. Make them our best friends where we go to them and spend time with them above social media. The balance is so important. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As long as we work hard, persevere with unyielding effort. God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus will guide us. And when we go to heaven, I want to see you all there. And I can't wait because I'm going to have millions of years to say hello to each one of you. And it will be a really great day when we'll be with our saviour, all the children, everyone who's died, everyone who surrendered their hearts to God will be there. Let's surrender our hearts to God. Let's learn more about him. And let's do our best in our education and everything because we know that he cares for us and with him, nothing shall be impossible. Thank you for listening and have a lovely day. Amen. Thank you, Alicia. Amen. When we crossed through that water, you can imagine which Bible scene we were thinking of. Red Sea. But you know what? We were I was in perfect peace, knowing that God would get us safely over the water, and he did. We're just going to conclude now. The son came home. We're familiar with the story. <clears throat> the father, you can imagine, the father every single day was looking out to see if his son would return. And the Bible tells us his son did. You can see he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. And what did he have? Compassion. He ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto his father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe. You know that's what the Father has for you and for me? The best robe, the robe of Christ's righteousness? And put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat. Beloved, are we partaking of the Lamb of God spiritually? Are we eating his word, are we remembering daily his sacrifice for you and for me? You see, when we eat God's word, we can be merry. We can be full of joy. We can have that experience that Paul talks about. Christ in you, the hope of glory. The father said, this is my son who was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to be merry. You see, in Christ's Object Lessons, it says this, the parables of the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the prodigal son, they bring out distinct lines of God's pitying love for those who are straying from him. Although they have turned away from God, he does not leave them in their misery. Thank you, Jesus. I got fed up of spiritually eating pig's food, beloved. He is full of kindness and tender pity toward all who are exposed to the temptations of the artful foe. And look what it says here in Evangelism 693. Sometimes we write off people, beloved, because they've left the church and that's the wrong thing to do. We should pray for them. Look what it says. When the storm of persecution really breaks upon us, when do you think that's going to be, beloved? That's just before us. We're told the true sheep will hear the true shepherd's voice. Self-denying efforts will be put forth to save the lost. And what? Many who have strayed from the fold, what will happen? 
they will come back to follow the great shepherd. Praise the Lord. Never write anybody off. Right now, this is the final slide. We have probation. We have the door of probation that is still open. As we have said throughout this presentation, we have an intercessor in heaven, a heavenly advocate, Jesus Christ, our righteous. When I was a little boy, I remember one night wanting to go from my bedroom to my mother's bedroom. I should have knocked on the door, but I didn't. I opened her bedroom door, and it's something that is seared on my mind forever. I saw my mother praying to God in a way I've never heard her pray. She was in tears, and she was making noises, groanings that I'd never heard before. I was actually quite afraid. But I later learned that my mother was a woman that loved God and trusted God that even when things didn't seem to be going so well, God would pull things through. And I'll tell you what, children, my mother prayed for me whilst I was 10 years in the world, every single day that I would come back in the faith. I hope you understood the story. It's not just the story of a prodigal son. It's about a prodigal family. And I know that I'm not speaking just to ourselves. I'm speaking to families who have also gone through similar experiences. Daddies, husbands, maybe some of your elders, or maybe you're a pastor. Do you feel that you've strayed from God? Do you feel that you've gone into a so-called spiritual country far off? I've got good news. God is calling you back home. Mothers, when you think it's just too much when you're educating the children and it doesn't seem like homeschooling is working, I want to tell you something. God is interceding for you, interceding for my wife, so that our children can grow up in the fear of the Lord with the strong support of the fathers. Children, there are so many temptations out there for you. The grass really does look green in the world, but the world is full of pain, disease, and death. Where you are is the best place for you to be. Never forget that. Never forget that the love of your parents is the most important gift that you can have. And if, if any of you young people stray from the father's home, always remember, you can come back. God's love is there for you. Because again, I'm going to repeat this wonderful promise. Where sin abounds, grace abounds even further. And our Jesus Christ can save us to the uttermost. I pray that there was something from this message, beloved, that will encourage you as we prepare to see Jesus Christ face to face. Now, my girls will conclude with a beautiful song. The song we're going to sing is written by Ralph Henderson. It's the prodigal son song. There's a story that's told of a man with two sons, written a long time ago. How the younger one wanted a life of his own. He was tired of living at home. So he went to his father and asked him to give the portion that was rightfully his. He said, Father, I must try to make it alone. I'm certain I know how to live. Now that kind-hearted father, he loved his new son, but he didn't know just what to do. 
She got the request of this impetuous one who just tried to talk these things through. When he gave him the portion he asked him to give, he said, I'll be praying for you. Just heed my advice and be wise in your ways, or the world they will take it from you. If he would heed that warning, life would be better, I know, yes, I know. Sometimes it takes a struggle before we learn the way to go. Before we learn the way to go. Now the time had gone by and his journey had led to a place that was so far from home. Soon the money was spent and the friends were all gone. And he was just standing alone. And he thought about home and the servants he knew. They always had plenty to spare. Yes, I will return and confess to my father and ask him to dwell with him there. But when he came back home, his father was waiting for him. With open arms he embraced him. He said, my son has come home again. He said, my son has come home again. What was lost now is found again. Are you just drifting away? From your heavenly Father's love. There is no reason to stray. Just hold on to his arms of love. If you will heed this warning, life will be better, I know. Yes, I know. There is no need to struggle before we learn the way to go. Before we learn the way to go. It's time we learn the way to go. We just have a word of prayer. Amen. Oh, you can reverently kneel before the Lord your Maker. Loving Father, we just want to thank you for Jesus. We want to thank you, Lord, that you are pleading on our account through with the Holy Spirit, making groanings which cannot be uttered, interceding for God's children with the blood of Christ, and through the power of your Holy Spirit and your divine angels, guiding your sheep back home. Father, we know that you have a rainbow above your throne and it's representative of all of the colors. And we need to remember that Jesus died for every nation, kindred, tongue and people, and that heaven will be filled with your children from all fauna corners of the earth. Father, we've experienced COVID-19. There are discussions to have millions and millions of children vaccinated. We know that there are laws that have changed, that have taken away our civil liberties to a great degree. I'm just asking, dear God, as we come closer and closer to the end, let our eyes remain upon Jesus Christ, May we have full confidence that we do not know what you shall look like when you come, but when you come, we shall be like you. And Father, it's this hope that we have in our hearts. And we thank you, not for just calling us home, not just my family, but the families on this conference call. But I'm thanking you also in advance that through the power of God, you will call home other children of this world. The Bible says, come out of her, my people. 
Thank you for hearing our prayer and thank you for blessing us with this camp meeting. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, girls. Amen. A beautiful story and a beautiful song. Thank everyone for such an encouraging and inspiring message. Thank you. And we'll all be back at three o'clock. So we look forward to seeing you all again soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Bye. 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 See you, everyone. Thanks for the message. Thanks for the message. Fantastic. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone. You were blessed by the message. Bye. 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 Bye.